Hi everyone, today I am giving you explanation on the topic the watering eye. This is the watering eye part 2 in which I will cover the epiphora part. Epiphora, it is defined as the inadequate drainage of tears which means in case of epiphora there is an improper drainage of tears from our eyes. Now, let us consider the some parts. We have to understand first of all these parts of the lacrimal apparatus to understand the concept of epiphora. So first of all we begin with the puncta. These are basically the small holes which are present at the corner of lower as well as upper eyelid. When we are talking about both of them means in a plural form then these are known as puncta. When we are talking about the singular then this is known as punctum. So in every eye, in each eye two punctums are present. First one is upper punctum and the present at the upper eyelid and the another punctum is present at the lower eyelid which is known as a lower punctum. Next one is canaliculi. Now again we have two canaliculi. If we are talking about the plural form then we will use the word canaliculi otherwise when we are talking about the singular then we have the word canaliculus. Again two canaliculus are present. First one is upper canaliculus and the second one is the lower canaliculus. The next part is lacrimal sac. The punctum and canaliculi get attached to the lacrimal sac. Next part is the duct which is the nasolacrimal duct which is the last or we can say the deep, deep part of lacrimal apparatus is the tear duct or nasolacrimal duct. In the short form we will use the word NLD. N stands for naso, L stands for lacrimal and the D stands for duct. And the next one is the tear gland which is also known as the lacrimal gland which helps in the production of the tears. So this was all about the lacrimal apparatus. Let's move further. Causes of epiphora. So we have two causes of epiphora. First one is physiological cause and the second one is mechanical obstruction. Let's discuss about the physiological cause. It is a mechanical pump failure due to the weakness of orbicularis oculi muscle. Now in our eye orbicularis oculi muscle is present due to whose weakness lacrimal pump failure occurs. Now first of all we have to consider these cases. Let us consider the case number one. In this case we are noticing that uh, the eye is closed. So along with the closing of the eye the punctums are also closed which are present almost here and at the same time the canaliculus also get closed. Okay. So the water from our eyes gets moved directly into the lacrimal sac okay first of all the water get passed to the punctum then the punctum get closed then water get passed to the canaliculus then canaliculus get closed so by closing both of these parts the water gets moved into the lacrimal sac this was the first case condition now let's move to the case number two in which we will see that the lacrimal sac get closed so the water gets moved directly into the NLD which means nasolacrimal duct so here we are basically seeing that the function of the mechanical pump is to give the direction to the water and helps in the drainage of it so it gives the direction uh, to the water from the punctum canaliculus lacrimal sac and then it get moved through the nasolacrimal duct at last so from this we will get clear about that that if the lacrimal pump failure takes place then the water will not reach to the nasolacrimal duct so the water will not get reached to the lacrimal sac also the water doesn't get reached to the punctum as well as canaliculus so the water comes out of our eyes in the form of tears okay which becomes the part of epiphora and this condition will takes place in the eye when mechanical pump failure takes place now the muscle do not perform its regular function with opening and closing eyelids. Now the orbicularis oculi muscle perform the function of opening and closing eyelids but it doesn't perform the function of transferring the water from one part to another or drainage of the water from one part to another along with closing and opening eyes. Next one is mechanical obstruction. Now the mechanical obstruction may be lie at the different levels. It may be lie at the level of punctum canaliculus, lacrimal sac or NLD. So let's go through one by one. Punctal causes includes. Now we have two causes uh, which are related to the punctum. First one is eversion of the lower punctum which means the lower punctum gets outward. Evert it may. It get. 
नेक्स्ट वन इज पंक्टल ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन विच मीन्स देर इज एन ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन ऑफ स्टैकल इन केस ऑफ पंक्टम लेट्स मूव टू द फर्स्ट वन इवर्जन ऑफ द लोअर पंक्टम इंक्लूड्स इट अगेन इंक्लूड्स द टू केसेज फर्स्ट वन इट इज़ कॉमनली सीन इन द ओल्ड एज एज वन पर्सन ग्रोइंग इन द एज और इंक्रीजेज विद द एज इट इज़ सीन इन दोज पर्सन नेक्स्ट वन इट मे बी अकरिंग फॉर इन कंजक्टिवाइटिस नाउ अदर डिजीज ऑल्सो इंक्लूडिंग इन दिस दैन द पर्सन इज सफरिंग फ्रॉम कंजेंटिवाइटिस विच मीन्स इन्फ्लेमेशन of the conjunct eye next one chronic peripheritis from the long time inflammation of the lid margin takes place and due to any cause of ectropion or if the outward turning of the lid margin takes place in the patient eye then the patient have these conditions okay next one is punctal obstruction now the punctal obstruction may be congenital absence of the puncta now from the birth the punctum gets block sorry the punctum gets absent which comes under the punctal obstruction burns also takes place infections takes place rarely the foreign body takes place cilia may also block the punctum cilia means the hair particle due to the stucking of the hair particle in between the punctum the punctum gets block next prolonged use of drugs if one is using the drugs from a long time then the punctal obstruction also takes place next one is causes of canaliculi now we have two reasons for the causes of canaliculi first one canalicular obstruction may be congenital or acquired it may be congenital means by birth or it may be acquired after the birth it takes place due to some reasons like the foreign body trauma trauma or the injury and the canaliculitis the word canaliculitis means inflammation of the canaliculi next one is causes in lacrimal sac now it includes congenital mucous membrane folds in this case by birth there are mucous membranous folds are present in the lacrimal sac next one is dacrocystesis the word dacrocystesis means inflammation of the lacrimal sac the lacrimal part the lacrimal sac part gets inflamed next one is causes in nld which means causes in nasolacrimal duct this may be congenital as well as acquired so congenital lesions include non canalization there is no canalization or sometimes there is a partial canalization next one acquired causes of obstruction are first one is inflammatory strictures which means due to inflammation there is a narrowing of nld second one is tumors which means abnormal cell growth takes place there next one diseases of the surrounding bones if there is any disease takes place in the surrounding bones then it also affect the nld and becomes the cause of nld now this was the end of the epiphora as well as its causes thanks for your patience listening